Hello and welcome to Getting Candid with me, your girl Helen. Remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell. Now, today my guest is uh, a rapper who has been quiet for a while. He belonged to one of the biggest hip hop groups that we ever had in the country. I'm talking about Young Verbal, Reggie, Young Verbal from the group Zone Farm. He's been quiet, we don't know what he's been up to, so I'm excited to chat with him and just know what has been happening in his life. Where has he been? But we have our next big thing, and this is another rapper camouflage. So enjoy this episode. Join me on the other side. Take a walk through life, just play the game, make the chase like you flame. Take your chance, fight for success if you really want to be the best. My life, my rules, my choice, my stick, my bet, my win. My life, my rules, my choice, my stick, my bet, my win. My life, my love, my rule, my, my choice, my stake, my bet, my win. Melbet, something you can bet on. Hello, welcome back to Getting Candid. I mentioned that I'll be chatting with Young Verbal. <laughs> Are you still called Young Verbal? Ah, definitely. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. Forever young, guys. The only thing Forever that has changed young. is the hair. Ash, yeah, yeah. The, the, the hair needed to go, man. You need, Why? I, need, I needed to give you guys a new look, man. Like, you got, you got too used to, to the ponytail. But we liked it. Huh? We liked it. Yeah, but you know the funny thing is, at the beginning when I started with that hair, I used to get a lot of hate for it. Yeah? I used to get a lot of hate for it. Then we got used to it. Got used to it and then it became part of the brand. So yeah. like, yeah, rebirth sometimes. Rebirth, yeah. you gotta switch up. Yeah, but this is all right. Ah, thank you, thank you. How have you been? How have you been? I've been great, man. Um, I've been, I've been amazing. It's been a roller coaster over a couple of years. Yeah. But this is, this is, this is the best version of of Young Verbal and Reggie at the same time. So I'm in a very beautiful place and I love it. Yeah, yeah. you were kind of hiding. <laughs> for, for those people, where were you? What, what was happening, just? Um, so initially, the, the biggest thing is that I left Z for a while, mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of years. So I needed to go back to South Africa, reconnect and, you know, just re like try to recenter myself and discover myself outside of Z because I keep on telling people that Zed is home, you yeah. know, like Zed is home, it's been home for years, but um, with everything that was going on music-wise in my personal life, I just needed time to detach for a little bit and like discover myself and find myself. Okay. Because yeah, I was getting lost in, 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 in the image that is Young Rogue. Yeah. You know? So I just needed to go back to SA and discover who Reggie, Reggie is, you know? So SA is uh, home, home, home. Yeah, that's home, home, home. So I've, I've got home, home, home on both sides. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, like, uh, but uh, I would say 90% of my family yeah. is, in, is in SA. Yeah, okay. So um, most of the, almost every verse there's always, always South African in yeah. it. And uh, most people are like, is this South African? Who is South African? Between his parents, are both your parents from South African or? So <laughs> it's very complicated. It's very, very complicated. My dad, uh, my dad is very South African. My mom is very Zambian. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but, you know, um, it was actually quite a challenge, to be honest. So mostly, in, 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 in most cases, like when I was doing music, look, I grew up in South Africa. Yeah. Okay? Like my childhood and my young adulthood yeah. was spent in South Africa. So discovering myself in Z, I found myself in Z by mistake, to be 100% honest. Like I wasn't even supposed to be here, you know? But I found myself in Z and then I fell in love with Zed. How did you find? I want to understand the accidentally part. So my dad, my dad was a diplomat. Uh -huh. So he used to work for the embassy. So one of his missions, he was positioned in Zed. So usually when my dad would go on his work things, I'll just stay back home in South Africa and do my thing. So this time I was like, you know what? Um, <laughs> you're too much of a wild card. You 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 can't be <laughs> you can't be left alone for too long. I, I'm, I'm not I'm not. What were you doing? Uh, no more Tessa, Anna. But you know, I, I am. I <laughs> house parties? <laughs> no, not even house parties. It's just that I was I was I was too obsessed with the culture, man. Like okay. the music culture, the hip hop culture, yeah. the everything that comes with it. You know, so yeah. I was I was too active on the streets. That's the best, the most diplomatic way that I can put it. I was too active on the streets. So, you know, so he just felt that, you know, and I was spending a lot of time away from, from family as well because of school and stuff like that. So I was one of those, like I went to hostels like quite early, like, you know, so we grew up out of home, you know, we we're always on campus, you know, stayed, 
in uh, school apartments and stuff like that. You know, so he just felt like you know this is the right time for for you to come and reconnect with family. Mm -hmm. And that happened in Z. And he didn't know what he was starting <laughs> because <laughs> when I came out here, um, the scene was still fresh. Uh, hip hop wasn't something that people were doing. Hip hop wasn't something that you know was popular. And there was this underground scene. And yo, I met I met I met Tim, uh, Dope, Al Kanai, Jay, all through Hoster. See, meeting a Hoster was the defining moment in my life. Yeah, because when I met Hoster, he introduced me to everybody else. And I fell in love with Zed, man. And not only just because of the culture, there's something about Zed, man. It's, it's, it's got this natural beauty that you can't run away from. And you can't find any place like it anywhere else in Africa. You know, so yeah, I fell in love with that. Can you speak any Zambian language? Yes, but Fluently. Horrib no, horribly, <laughs> horribly. I, I embarrass myself every time I speak, people laugh. So Nyanja or Bimba. Ah no my sako, nyanja pangono pangono, you know, sometimes <laughs> to my kamba where it's necessary. Uh -huh. Just to blend in here and there, you know. <laughs> but the beauty is like people know that I'm you know, whenever they see me they say, Ah, you know? Yeah. So every time when I speak broken nyanja, they die, they laugh. So yeah. they're used to it. They used okay. to it. Okay. Nice. So uh, how did you when you, you when you met Hoster? Where you were like obviously an individual artist. Yeah. yeah. Did did you? I want I want to know the relationship that you had with Hoster. Um, Hoster was always like a big brother to me, mm -hmm. uh, even from the time that we met. So when we met, um, he came across some of my music. So Hoster was one of those. Somehow he discovers talent in different parts of the continent. So he used to talk to a lot of people. He actually came across my music on the internet before I even came to Z. So when I came here, it's like, yo, you that, I was called Verbal Assassin back then. You that Verbal, Verbal Assassin. Verbal Assassin. Okay. Like, I was very active on the streets, guys. Don't, don't judge. What? Okay, so you know what? Pause. <laughs> you know when you say on the streets, you know what comes to my mind? Mm -hmm. Somebody's selling crack, they're doing No, bread. no. No, no, no. Uh. I, I didn't sell any <laughs> crack, guys. I, di I did not sell any, any crack or any uh, illicit substances. On the streets, That's I did a, no such sound, thing. That doesn't sound convincing. <laughs> I did no such thing. <laughs> That's my statement and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whether we believe it or not. No, I mean, no, but I didn't sell no crack. No, 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 not anything like that. Not anything that crazy, no. No, it okay. wasn't anything that crazy, yeah. Okay, the lesser uh, uh, strong stuff? No, 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 no. Like no, illicit, no, no, no illicit substances. <laughs> no illicit substances. No illicit substances were ever sold in my person or in my capacity. Okay. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> yeah. Um, verbal assassin. Yeah, verbal assassin. So, hoster met a verbal assassin. Is like, you know what? I really like your style. I like what you do. You should come to, to the studio. So, I was staying in Olympia at the time with the family, and hoster used to stay like just down the road from me. So it's like, no, you should come through, we're staying in Olympia. So I went through to, to his home studio at the time and he had like so much music, like so much music, music that he recorded. And at the time he had uh, Slam Dunk Records. Slam Dunk Records was house to Al Kanai, Jay, uh, Dope G. This is before I met him actually, you know, so the guys were already working with Hoster. So I heard their stuff already, you know. And we started going around like ciphers, street ciphers, you know. Playhouse used to have like hip hop events. So I used yeah. to I used to go to these places and yeah. So Hoster was like that big brother, you know. He was he was like that big brother. He was like, okay, I'll introduce you to this person, I'll introduce you to that person. So Hoster like nurtured me as an artist, you know. So he saw something in me that for me it was just like I wanna rap, you know, but Hoster saw it beyond that. Hoster saw he saw the talent and he saw how he can mold it and actually turned me into an artist. Because there's a difference between being a rapper and being an artist. Yeah. Very big difference. Anybody can rap if they really wanted to, but being an artist, that's where the, the tough thing is. And that's what Hoster molded and turned all of us into. You know? So Hoster is the one that uh, came up with Zone Farm? Yes, yeah. because Hoster, as you said, were individual artists. You know, Jay was his own artist, Dope was his own artist, Tim was his own artist, I was my own artist, Al Kanai was his own artist. So he just thought to himself, he's like, you know what? Imagine if we were to combine all these different styles and yeah. skills, and imagine if we were to make it like one thing, like one super group. And that's ex those were his words, if we could just make one super group. Yeah. And we thought about it. I mean, we were young, we were ambitious, and we are like, you know what? We'd be unstoppable. 
would be unstoppable and if we did that. He real. formed, without shadow of a doubt, the biggest group to come out of Zed, and I'm proud to say that. Great. Okay, you know what? Uh, let's, I want to talk more about Zone Farm uh, after the break. But this break, we're going to our next big thing. And our next big thing this week is camouflage. Get to know him. Alrighty, so our next big thing is camouflage, very talented. And we, we, we always say on this segment, when we bring them, we believe they'll be the next big things. It's up to you. Do you think these guys will be the next big thing? How are you? <laughs> I'm good. And how are you doing, Helen? Good. Good to have yeah. you on the show. I appreciate you for having me on the show, actually. Thank you. You're it's welcome. a blessing. You're welcome. And uh, what's up to all your viewers and all your, you know, your everybody that follows you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sure they hear it and they receive it. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's yeah. the thing. I want to know firstly when you started doing music. Um, I can't give you exactly when I started doing music because I've been doing music for a very long time. Professionally? But professionally, I've been doing music professionally, let's say, since uh, 2015. Yeah, since 20, 2016, 2015, all the way back into 2013 when I released my first video and I was back in the U.S. Nice. Yeah. How's been the journey? The journey has been a blessing. It's been ups, it's been downs, but more of anything, it's been a blessing because I'm able to wake up in the morning and do what I love doing, so it's been a blessing. I listened to your song, uh, one featuring um, Shape 187. Yeah. Uh, the title is... Uh, in Tulu. Into, into, what in Tulu does it Wundi. mean? Shout out to my brother, Chefy 187, and shout out to magician. In Tulu, it means I'm a problem. When I'm going to my problems, I'm going to I'm going to in Tulu. I kind of had an idea, yeah. but I was like, yeah. I just need to get proper clarification what, <laughs> what it means. <laughs> no, it means confusion, problems. Yeah, yeah like each, each, when you listen to the song, it says, Chila level power, new devil. devil. I yeah, want to want to want to want to want to want Double shift. So it just talks about every level that you attain in life, you're gonna face a new devil. So every blessing comes with a you know with a with a with a devil that you have to you know go over. So yeah. don't get defeated, stay motivated. And you did another song with Wheels, very good songs. Yeah, that you shout had. out to my brother Wheels, Mr. Nyopole, and you know that's one of my favorite songs yeah. out of all the music that I've ever done. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what are we uh, are you working on an album, an EP? What what are you doing right now? I'm working on an album. Um, I've got two singles that are out. I mean, not yet out. There's one single into Lundi that's out, and then the back then is going to be dropping sometime next week. The video is actually ready, so it's going to be audio and video. So just be ready for it, you know, to drop on my YouTube page. Nice. Uh, okay, and uh, you have to tell us so people need to know yeah. where to watch. And where. But firstly, before we even go to your your uh, your social handles, yeah. uh, first, which producers are you working with? Um, I've only worked with, uh, on the album I've worked with Magician, he's the only, he's the executive producer on that, but I've also got projects from, you know, uh, Tishon, I've got projects from my brother Mwamba in Zimbabwe, so, you know, it's different kind of producers, but the main producer on it is Magician. Okay, yeah. can you give us a line from uh, Intulu Wound, since it's the only A line from Intulu Wound. Yeah. Okay, um, the money we're getting, everybody be hating, ever since the young and I'm gonna get it. And I'm never gonna stop. That's all. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sing the chorus. I know. That's I know. Chef Ade Seven was doing the, the chorus, and they just do it. All right, let me do some. I'm not cocky. I'm not lucky. I'm just blessed. They try to take it, but they can't. It's in my chest. If you wanna come and get it, be my guest. I woke up in the morning. I'm not stressed. Oh nah. But be careful, cause messing with my money leave you dead in a body bag. If this was you, what would you do? I probably hate me. If I was you, dear God, I got confessions, oh no. I don't really like my haters, oh no. Would it be sinning if I kill them, oh no. Cause it was written down way before, oh, oh. And this is for my squad in the trenches, trying to make a million and put food on the table. They told us we would never make it this far, but now we walk up in the bank and we know they no label. Nice. <laughs> And yeah. uh, that's a good, good, good line. Now, yeah. I want uh, people to follow you and because uh, they, they need to know what you're doing. Just yeah. give us your social handles so that people... So can, uh, you can uh, find me on Instagram at camouflage Z and you spell camouflage K-A-M-O-F-L-A-G-E, Z, Z-E-D. And then on Facebook, it's camouflage Africa, K-A-M-O-F-L-A-G-E, Africa. And then on... YouTube. YouTube, it's Camouflage Z, same as my Instagram. So Great. Yeah, so he's up. dropping new videos, so you guys don't want to miss out. And you need to watch the videos. Yeah. So we always say, next big thing. We believe these are the next big things. So you guys have to support them. Go to their social media, get yeah. to know, support what they're doing. And 
let's have this new generation come and take over. You ain't never heard it like this, man. You better tell everybody, shut it off. Everything else is just noise, man. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bounce. Thank you so much for coming through. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Alrighty, so that's it from our next big thing. Welcome back. So that was our next big thing. So we believe it's the next big thing. Do you believe that? Tell us that in the comment box. And uh, firstly, I should say that a lot of people have been getting great responses about the next big things that we've been posting. And that's why we've decided to be posting them separately on their own as well. So you guys can enjoy the episodes on their own as well. So I'm still chatting with Young Brebo, the verbal assassin. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I can't believe you did that. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that though. Yeah, so Zone Firm, one of the groups that we all, almost all of us, Zambians fell in love with. You guys won awards. You won one of the biggest awards on the continent. Very proud moment for every Zambian who loves Zambian music. Even those people that don't listen to the ah, but now in a channel, oh, award, that's it. Mm. They are excited. How was the experience being in Zone Farm? It was it was beautiful because um, for me it was like training camp. You know the thing is before you meet with other talents, you convince that you're the best thing out there. Like naturally as a rapper, that's the type of confidence you're supposed to have, you know. Yeah. Meeting up with the boys, I realized that people rap out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> people rap out there. So it was so much fun in the sense that every song was like, what can we bring? And the thing is, that was the beauty of Zone Fam. Everybody brought something unique and all these different styles. Yeah. They came together nicely. But the thing is, I learned so much from them and I would like to believe that they learned a lot from me as well in that process, you know. So it made me a better artist as an individual, you know, I understand the dynamics of creating a song from like four different perspectives, simply because like every time we'd create a song, we had to accommodate and think about how this person would fit in and how that person would fit in, you know? So I have like a different approach to how I create my songs, how I write my songs, how I do my choruses, you know, yeah. sing-alongs, catchy and everything. I never would have learned that if I was doing things on my own. I think it would take longer, so Zone Fan for me was an amazing learning experience, an amazing learning experience because the capabilities that I have now, I wouldn't have harnessed them on my own if it wasn't for, you know, learning and watching other people do it. And the writing sessions were crazy because while you're writing, you think like, hmm. <laughs> so you know it was it was very competitive. So yeah. every time you write and record, you bring your A game because yeah. you know that if if you don't bring your A game you'll be taken out by the next man, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was a beautiful experience. Why did you split? Growth, growth. It, we, we got to a point where we felt that we achieved everything that was on our dream board as a group, you know? I mean, like you mentioned, the things that we did, we, 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 a lot of people didn't think it was possible, but you know, we knew that we're gonna do big things, but we didn't know to what extent, you know? Okay. Yeah, and when we got to that level and we got to that point, we realized that, you know what? Maybe there is something else that we need to venture into individually and then we can focus on Zone Fam. So that's, that's when we took the break. The break has been long. It has. Um, the thing about growth is when we took the break, we were trying to grow individually as well. So in that growth, um, there's no time frame to growth, you know? As time goes, like you, your, your path can extend, it can shorten. Like it's, it's not up to the individual. But are you saying there's hope for Zone Firm to get back? Or even just to give us just like one album? That question is always hard to answer because just now I'll say something and then three years down the line they'll be like, aha, you remember you said, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So like I always avoid putting myself on record. But look, Zone Firm is, is, is a concept that will always be there. It's not going anywhere. Like, and it's some, it's, 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 it's a force that we created, and even us, we can't run away from it. You know, it's, it's there. Me personally, I acknowledge it. Like for, for like two years, I was like, ah, you know what? Uh, -uh. enough now. Zone from this, zone from that. But you know, like as time went on, we general, can't interview any of you without talking about zone. Exactly, it's and not possible. And it's part of our DNA. You know, yeah. it, 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 it makes up part of who we are as artists. Yeah. And I, me personally, individually, I've gotten to a point where I acknowledge that, and I don't fight it. You know, so it's a force that we've created and it's there. It's just that when it will come back, I can't say. Because I'd be lying. I'd really be lying because I'm not sure myself, you know. But everyone is in good terms. No, definitely. I mean, if, if you listen to the, the two mixtapes that are dropped in, in, uh, in December, 
I've worked with every single member of Zone Fam. The only person I was unable to work with was Al Kanai because um, he was busy and our schedule just didn't clash. Shout out to Al Kanai, he just graduated. I'm, I'm so yeah, proud of him. I'm yeah. so proud of him. I was so happy when I saw that, you know? Yeah. So, like, he was going through his, his own path that wasn't music related at that time, you know? So, we just couldn't connect. But yeah, I've worked with everyone. Tim is on the project, Dope is on the project, Jay is on the project. These are my brothers, you know what I mean? These are my brothers. It's just that like right now, we just can't give the people what they want, unfortunately. So right? here's they the have rumor that I heard mm -hmm. about your split. Mm. I heard that uh, somebody somewhere was uh, trying to introduce you guys to Illuminati. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a story that I heard. <laughs> And then, uh, uh, apparently, some of the members were willing to. Mm -hmm. The other members were not willing to. That's how the misunderstanding came up and everyone just decided to go different ways. Uh, I can tell you straight, I didn't get no calls from Illuminati. <laughs> like, okay, if, if I do get calls from Illuminati, I'll let you know. But, uh, like <laughs> but you would. Yeah, no, tell but, us what, they've called me, then they're giving me this uh, deal and... No, but... It's, it's, it's understandable for people to come up with like crazy scenarios yeah. and because a lot of people for a lot of years have been trying to figure out what exactly Why? happened yeah. and the thing is we've told people a couple of times what happened but yeah. they choose not to listen to what it's we're like, saying it's like there's just no belief of saying they can't just split to for growth yeah. obviously yeah. something happened but like it really is that it really is growth it really is growth like we need to discover what we can do individually as well guys you know because like look group dynamics are very complicated in the sense that Everything that you achieve as a group, you achieve as a group. Sometimes you need to walk in your greatness as an individual to also know what you're capable of, you know? Because everything that we've achieved as, as Zone Fam, I can take individual credit for. Because everything that we've achieved as a group, I know that each and every single person contributed in one way or another, you know? But sometimes you have to walk in your own personal greatness to see what else you're capable of. Music for us is, is artistry, right? It goes beyond just making songs and whatever. We, we love making music. You know, it's, it's, it's a culture to us. And beyond that, we're competitive as individuals. I also, I also want to know what Young Robo can do out there. I, I, Young Robo has got ambitions to win a Grammy. Yeah. You know? The same way Zone Fam has got ambitions to win a Grammy. But Young Robo himself also wants to win a Grammy. And I want to see if I can win a Grammy. Okay. You know? Now uh, that um, you've talked about uh, everything about Zone Farm, just this last question I want to know. Uh, I listened to your verse on My Diary 9. Mm -hmm. You were mm -hmm. a bit open and blunt. Yeah. So uh, obviously when My Diary 9 drops, everyone is listening and they're like, what was he talking about? What did he mean? Who was he talking about? Mm -hmm. So uh, you talked about somebody being ungrateful and say you guys were not there for for him when he lost the mother and in my head i'm thinking who lost the mother uh as uh, jerox mm -hmm. were you talking about jerox that particular bar was was intended for jay because um before the diary that i did jay did a diary before that um and i remember when when that happened i listened to it and it came from a place of pain you know i cannot imagine what it's like to lose like a mother. Me personally, my, my, my biological mom, she just walked away. But I, I, I'm in no position to really know what it's like to lose someone that close to death, you understand? And he had his own way of processing that pain that no one else can understand, and, you know? So when he did his diary, he, he mentioned that he felt abandoned in that time. He felt like the boys were not there for him and we didn't support him the way that we we're supposed to. For me personally, when I heard that verse, it broke my heart, you know, it broke my heart. Not from a, not from a point of, oh, I can't believe he said that, no. It broke my heart from, it hurts me that he felt that way and I'm one of, I'm one of the people he's talking about, you know, like it, it hurt me that he felt that way to feel that, yo, I was going through this heavy thing and my people were not there for me. They abandoned me, they turned their backs on me, you know. That bothered me, like, that, that, that bothered me so much. It, like, it bothered me so much. I remember I was even telling the boys, I'm like, that's not it, you know, that's not it. And I, it bothered me for a very, very long time. So when KB approached me and is like, listen, Verb, um, I remember I was in Swaziland at the time. Um, I was doing something in Swaziland and KB hit me up, it's like, I'm working on the diary, 
can you, are you available? Because I was actually supposed to be on a previous other diary, yeah. but I told him at the time, I'm like, yo, big man, I appreciate the invite, but unfortunately, mentally right now, I won't give you my best work, you know? Like, I wasn't ready to address things, you know? Like, I just wasn't in that space, you know? And this time, is like, I'm doing another one. Verb, like, I need a verse from you, you know? And I told him, like, you know what? This is the right time. I can give you what it is that you're looking for. And I couldn't do that verse without telling Jay, you know? Speaking to him man to man. That wasn't a Zone Fam versus Rocks thing. That wasn't a Rocks versus Zone Fam thing. No, that was young verbal talking to Jay Rocks. Okay. You know? So, and I had to tell him that, look, if people listen to the verse carefully, they'll understand. I said, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. No one can, no one can understand the type of pain that you were going through. But me, as an individual, as a man, as young verbal, as Reggie, this is what I'm saying to you. That was not the case. I'll always be there for you, and I'll always have your back, regardless of what it is that we may go through. Okay. You know. So obviously, you know, when people hear anything, they get excited, and you know, they jump over everything that you're saying, and they pick and choose what to focus on. Okay. But then yeah. you were sick. Not sick. Um, <laughs> not sick. So um, when is it? Last year. No? Was it last year or this year? I don't even remember. So I had an incident where I almost lost my life. So uh, long story short, I don't like to get into details, but you know, I was attacked, you know, and uh, yeah, it was life threatening. Um, the aim during that period was to finish me off. You know, like I was like, literally I was supposed to die because I was in a hospital bed for a very, very long time. Very long time, you know, I was supposed to die and yeah, like during that period, I remember thinking to myself, and I was like, yeah, this is it, this is it. You know, when, you, when, you sit, when you're sitting somewhere and you're like, okay, what's the tombstone going to read? Like, ah. wanna, you know how do you think about your tombstone? No, but that's how, that's how serious and dire the situation was. Like, I was convinced that, that's why even in the verse I said, lying in that hospital bed, I was convinced I was dead. Yeah. You know, like I was convinced because I was coming in and out of consciousness. So many times, like like I was, and every time I'd go out of consciousness, I was convinced, I'm like, this is it, this is this is my call, and you know, I'm going to the to the holies or holies, you know. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you said a lot of things on that. I'm trying to summarize because time has run out, and I want to talk about your new project mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, the last one. Somebody who's not grateful for the group that created them to be where they are. <laughs> that was that was intended for for anyone. Who, who, who has something negative to say about Zone Fam as a brand. Zone Fam has done a lot for all of us. It changed our lives, every single one of us. Be it people who are active members or people who used to be members and not members anymore. That was like, I was just putting this out there that for anyone who disrespects the brand that made us who we are, that was meant for them. If the shoe fits, if the shoe fits, yeah. then you have to wear it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, now there's so much. I think we need a part two because I, I still have a lot of questions hanging. Uh, I just wanted to know about uh, what you're working on now. Mm -hmm. uh, right now my focus is on Robert Cartel Music, mm -hmm. um, the company that I, uh, is, I'm the CEO of and I co-partnered with uh, uh, Trevor Mumba, the self-styled king. Uh, we put the concept together. It's a record, it's a record label, but it's also uh, artist management as well. So it's an exciting venture, and that's the reason why like, I've been you know, country hopping here and there, because we've got uh, artists spread out all over the continent. And yeah, so that's the, that's the new path that I'm on. Yeah. Uh, and I'm back to making music. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. back to making music, which is very exciting. Yes. So yeah, and at the, at the same time, I'm also managing other artists. How's well. that? How is that? Uh, people always say it's hard for an artist to manage other artists because you have your own things. Do you also have other people managing you? Um, yeah, like, so I started uh, Robert Cartel Music uh, that I'm the CEO of and I partnered with uh, Trevor Mumba, the self-styled king. It's a record label and also artist management. Uh, group so yeah uh, and I'm back to making music you know what I'm saying yeah very very excited nice. about that you know and uh, yeah I'm also working on other artists you know like trying to help them create the type of music that will make their brands blow up nice are you where are the offices SA uh, the offices are in SA we we in uh, Bryanston 
right now, but we're looking to branch out when we build our studios. We're in the process of building our own studio, so that's another thing I'm excited that's about. A lot. That's there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of blessings that I'm, yeah. that I'm grabbing with the team, so I'm very, very excited. Are we seeing an album from you soon? Definitely, definitely. This year? Uh, guys, I just gave you two mixtapes last year. Like, <laughs> let, 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 let me breathe. Let me, let me I'm breathe. Asking. Okay, you know what? Before the end of the year. Yeah. I, they, but they for now, it would just be like singles. And for now, it would be singles and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Until I'm ready to give out the full project. Okay. Yeah. I enjoyed chatting with you, Young Rebel. It was I nice enjoyed. catching up after a long time. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you for having me. But we need a part two. I still have a lot of questions for you. Like, seriously. Always ready. Always <laughs> ready. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Omnis, you have last words. You want to tell us um, something? Kachao family, I love you guys. I appreciate you. At Young Robo on all platforms. Let's chat. Let's interact. Let's get to know each other. They call me Young. <laughs> <laughs> yes, forever Young. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So this has been Young Verbal, and I hope you enjoyed the episode. Remember to keep subscribing, turning on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything that we upload on the channel. From me, your girl Helen. Let's bye bye. <laughs>